and we're live. Welcome back to my little corner of the internet, folks. This is actually take two. We tried to do this on Instagram about a week ago, right? Was we, we didn't try. We did it. It just didn't <laughs> save. <laughs> so we, we did it, and my vision and my CP fingers didn't quite uh, make it so that we could, so that I could save it. So that's okay. This is take two, and we're doing it again. Um, and I'm here uh, in my little corner of the internet with the wonderful Heather Vickery. Um, Heather and I have had a mutual admiration society going for, gosh, I don't know how long now, months. It feels like feels like my entire life. I don't. I, I can't imagine <laughs> Hopefully my in life. a good way, Itai. <laughs> Absolutely, I can't imagine my life without you. You've been you've been really uh, you know pivotal. So, and we're here to talk about this wonderful book that's coming out uh tomorrow right thursday uh, th th thursday i will get this straight in my head <laughs> yeah. you can pre-order it though so it's okay but official release date is thursday october 28th right official this release is my date. new baby this is heather's new baby and i just wanted you know wanted to go online come on here and 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 let uh and let you guys hear a little bit about about heather and her new book and uh and uh, what's what's so so tell us about your new baby. <laughs> yes. So uh, Itai flatters me. I am brave is my business. I'm a success leader, uh, coach, author. I'm the executive producer and host of the Brave Files podcast. So if you woman, folks. <laughs> follow Itai, then you know that he was a guest on my show, which was wonderful. If you haven't listened to that episode, go listen to it. Um, and the core of my work is, is around embracing our fears, understanding our fears, sort of taking them apart, dissecting them, and then using that knowledge, leveraging that knowledge into intentional bravery. So the title of the book is F Fearless. I spell it all the way out. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and what I mean when I say that is society tells us that we should be striving for fearlessness, right? It does all the time. Like the biggest, the strongest, the best leaders, the most successful, they're not afraid of anything. And that's just not true. It's right. Actually, let's call it what it is. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Yes, it is. Right. Fear is a natural, normal human emotion. Fearlessness is for sociopaths and three-year-olds. Fearlessness means that you aren't being intentional or thoughtful, you're not thinking about what you want to create and you're just sort of letting yourself go run wild, right? Mm -hmm. And so rather than that, what I hope folks will do and what I have built my life's work around is this idea of choosing bravely, of knowing what we're afraid of, understanding our truths, and then making thoughtful, intentional, brave choices. And I do that through a method I call the brave method. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I can tell you what that is in a minute, but the brave method is the book breaks down the brave method, which is a creative and strategic approach to problem solving, planning, and then building a life that you love that brings you joy. And if you want a business to go along with it. Mm -hmm. So I, I teach the brave method through uh, personal stories case studies of people who have been guests on my podcast or that I've worked with as, as clients, and then brave action items where you can go in and get to work and practice these skills right now. And it's really designed to go um, meet you wherever you are over and over in your life. It's not a one and done kind of thing. These are methods and systems and approaches that you can revisit over and over as you continuously evolve and change as we all do. Yeah, and and for me, you know, for those of you who know me, know that I kind of live in, at the very least, hyper, you know, hyper vigilance, and you know, on on my on my more challenging days, something bordering on paranoia. So for me, taking fear and leveraging it the way, you know, listening to what Heather has to say on her podcast and in the brave uh, face the the um, brave on purpose on Facebook has really helped me. And 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 given me the 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 strength and the the tools to really take take my ideas that I've been been uh, <clears throat> that I've been developing here and 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 move them forward. And without the podcast and without your support, Heather, I quite literally I don't think I would be exactly where I am today. So I I owe 
I owe a lot of a lot of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and how I'm how I view what I'm doing uh, to to you in the podcast and just your your support and your mm-hmm. your constant uh, your constant warmth and your love and, and just having my back. So this is uh, something that I'm really excited for people to have on their shelves or in their Kindles and eventually as an audio book for those of us who, who cannot, who have difficulty, you know, visually processing things in our ears, because this is really, I mean, there's some amazing, I mean, I haven't actually read any of the drafts, but I'm certain that there are some amazing tools uh, that that everybody can use in, in whatever situation they are, wherever, wherever you are in your life. So. It, and it's really an honor for me to to sit here and 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 talk about this today. Oh, thank you yeah. so much, Itai. I appreciate that. I am so inspired by your willingness to reassess and redefine where you are and how you feel about where you are and what you want for yourself. And I know you're actively doing so much of the work that I share here. So much of the Brave mm-hmm. Method is something that you actively lean into mentally and emotionally maybe not very, very much very very <laughs> much yeah. and, and in, in fact you know one of the one of the things that i i can't imagine having you know having done or having agreed to do without having had you know the support of the the collective and your support you know this past week uh we had the polyglot conference and I actually was invited to to speak in front of yeah. um, in front of a very very significant part of of the polyglot community with very very smart and influential people and and scholars and you know had I not had that you know the the had I not been listening to the podcast and having your support and you know you are among other things a master cheerleader. And and a master at, at just you know celebrating every little every little step um, you know in fact we call them little steps but they're actually not little steps uh, sometimes they feel like huge steps and and you know even the smallest things uh, feel very significant and you're so good at just you know validating that and recognizing that and 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 calling it what it is. And and being and being supportive in that way, and so um, you know, a, a lot of a lot the huge reason why I was able to do this and why I why I think it went so well, and I've gotten some amazing feedback uh, about the presentation, those that saw it, and uh, a lot of that has to do with 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 your support and the, the support of the 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 collective in general on Facebook and. I just can't wait to to get uh, to get my ears on the book. <laughs> I know I'm actively working on it. There's quite a process to doing an audio book, but we're going to get you one. I promise. And anybody anybody who wants one, the collective that Itai is talking about is the Brave on Purpose Collective, which is a free group. I invite anyone to come and join us. Yes, it's just a, com- a community of people who are tired of living by everybody else's terms and are ready to sort of step into their own brave. And and that looks very different for all of us. And what what you just said, Itai, which is um, what may feel like a small step to one person may feel like an enormous step to another person. Mm -hmm. And you may take that enormous step and then the next time it doesn't feel so enormous, but then there'll be a new scary thing that we're trying to tackle. And we sort of do it together. Constantly, yeah, yeah, and and knowing knowing that that we have all this all the support and everybody pulling for me in the group, and I have your you pulling for me, and you know we we interact via voice messages and on Twitter, um, pretty much I would say on a nearly daily basis, and it's it's really it's really wonderful. I can just I I can reach out, you know, and have a message from you, or just energetically feeling feeling you having my back is is makes all the difference in the world and this is one of heather's many many superpowers that i <laughs> that I, I i i value honestly beyond words folks which is uh, will you uh, flatter me thank you it's it's really awesome so yeah, yeah. i appreciate yeah. that um the book really has been a labor of love and i appreciate having um support 
system like you, friends, cheerleaders, uh, it's easy to cheerlead people who cheerlead us. And that's something <laughs> that I do talk about in the book is, is sort of building a community, a network. I call it your personal board of directors, people that are going to love you and support you no matter what, but call you on your bullshit and not give you a pass all the time. Right. So mm -hmm. um, all sorts of different easy bite size ways to get into action to embrace those fears and uh really you deserve to live a life that you love everyone does yeah, absolutely you know you talk about you talk about calling calling us calling ourselves out on our stuff i think this morning uh we had yeah. a twitter exchange it's just on my mind and i i so you had mentioned um i believe it was something about you know how difficult does life have to be all we have to do is you know sit back and relax to which i hope i respectfully said you know for those of us like me with 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 spastic quadriplegic cp that's a that's a more significant challenge than one would think and, yeah. and to which you said well yeah you know I, I meant it as a metaphor and i said you know as i was writing it i know you were you you mentioned that you you yeah. meant it as a metaphor but i think for 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 people who don't understand it as a metaphor, yeah, it, it's. I, I wish that doctors and therapists and, and and people who were dealing with the disabled community would 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 understand more better that yeah. when you, when you tell, especially somebody with spastic quadriplegic CP to relax, you get the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, you get the exact opposite response, and so you know this. But but because we have the kind of dynamic that we have and because you know we you know you help me to feel safe with you and i i hope i help you to feel safe with me we can do that and and yeah. and still you know and still support each other and love each other and and just like you said call call each other out on our stuff on our stuff even you know and and hopefully yeah. and 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 make the world better that way I think it does make the world better. Yeah, that that tweet did. It said, it, it, it to be fair, it didn't say all you have to do is relax because I actually do know oh, that no, doesn't help so anybody. Funny. So it's not just you. Like nothing gets me more worked up than somebody going, "Just relax, Heather. Just calm yeah, down." That. Like, Meh. That's what I think about that. Yeah. Um, but what it said was, you know sometimes and again it really was metaphorical but i appreciate i really do appreciate you going because it, it could be not everybody reads metaphors my partner doesn't mm -hmm. um do sarcasm like she just mm -hmm. doesn't even get it like it just doesn't, it doesn't land register. with her right uh which is fascinating because i i love sarcasm but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the the tweet said you know are you basically are you making things harder than they need to be like sometimes we need to surrender or we need to like you know, by, by pushing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward and going, going, going doesn't always fix our problems. Sometimes our problems get fixed when we lean back a little and we get our surroundings and we figure out what we want and then we take action. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and and I do believe that is true, but also I appreciate I love it when you do that. I, I love seeing things from a different perspective, um, even if. In full disclosure, depending, you know, how what mood we're in when we read something like that, we might be like, oh, again, again? schooled yeah. by Itai again, you know. No. But I sit with it and I'm like, no, but this is really true. And we want to be really conscious of it. Um, it doesn't change what I said, and I still stand by what I said, but I really <clears throat> appreciate seeing that other perspective yeah. and uh, it helps me be a better person. So I, I always love dialogue. Well, and and again, I if 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 we didn't have a, a dynamic where where we we purposely built this to 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 feel safe with each other enough to do that which is again one of one of your superpowers honestly <laughs> uh i i wouldn't i wouldn't have felt safe enough to 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 respond that way and i'm i just i, I feel i feel really held and and blessed and privileged to be able to do that because honestly in nine times out of ten, walking in the world, for various reasons, I I don't feel very safe for yeah. for various reasons, and just with in 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 the dynamic that we have, I I feel you know 
re relatively safe uh, to, to to be able to to respond like that, and that's that's a gift that I I, I definitely appreciate and hope I'll never take for granted because it's, it's. I appreciate that. I do a lot of corporate coaching and executive coaching, and I run a program that's called the Empowerment Program for mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion groups in different organizations. And um, one of the first things that I tell everybody is that there really are no such things as a safe space. There are okay. only safe people. It is the people that make the space safe. And I'm glad that I could do that for you. And I hope that that helps you do that for others. And that's the best that we can do is, is pay it forward like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. there, are, there are no safe spaces. There are only safe people. That's interesting. I, I never thought about it. That, but I guess it makes sense because it's the people that hold the space, right? That's right. Yeah. Interesting. 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 Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we can we create a safe space. That's right. right? We can say that, but but it's the it's the safe people who create the safe space. That's exactly right. And you could be, I mean, it's fair to say we could be in a situation where we believe the space is safe, but if a person comes into our our safe community that doesn't safe, it shakes everything up, and then we, you know, so it's important to sort of know who the people you're surrounding yourself with are, and it doesn't mean you don't ever spend time with people outside of your your circle but mm -hmm. it it means you maybe assess the situation before you do or say something that could potentially put you in harm's way especially right. if you're in a, a minority group of any kind mm -hmm. to be intentional about that too yeah yeah absolutely. Absolutely. absolutely and and this is you know this is just one of the, one of the many many gems that i'm sure you'll you'll find in the book and that's why i'm just so excited for everybody <laughs> To have Thank that you. to have that on their shelves as soon as humanly possible. So yeah, we should get uh, your wife a copy though. We we will have to do that absolutely absolutely. <laughs> I, I I have a question and it might sound a little bit of a, of a of a pain in the neck question, but I you know I think outside the box. Have you thought about or considered um, the possibility of uh, doing the book in braille? <laughs> I have not thought about that. Um, okay. I I love that idea. I have no idea what the cost barriers are to that. I don't I don't know anything about that, but it it just sounds something that as we're sitting here and and you know me thinking outside the box or something. Yeah. Uh, Do you, you know, read Braille? I I don't actually know, but is this you one know, language you don't speak? This is the well, only one. It's it's one it's one that I I haven't. I, I was never taught how to how to read, but um, you know, for me, for me, it's all aud mostly auditory. Yeah. So yeah. In, in, that, in that way, but um, I, I was just thinking, you know, you know, audio audio books, Braille it makes it, they seem connected, and I was wondering if sure. if, if that was something that had crossed. I will look into it. It, had, had it makes sense because your multi language passion is about connection, right? And, and Braille is a personal. Yeah. reading experience which is incredibly valuable but you speak so many languages because you want to be able to communicate with other people perfect right right yeah. and it, you know and, and that just makes it so that so that the book is 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 yeah. that much more accessible to 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 another segment of the population who you know who honestly we all need you out there as many of us as possible need, need to need to have this book on our on our shelves and in our lives so well thank you for that well y'all can get the book it's uh, available on amazon it's available on bookshop.org and you can pre-order right now the book is officially released on the 28th if you get the kindle version you'll have it in hand on that day um i hope everybody gets it if you love it which i think you will for goodness sakes, please go in Amazon and Goodreads and write a review and tell folks you like it. it. You know? It really does matter for a small independent publisher and writer like me. Absolutely. And I, I'm I'm just you know, I've I've gotta say, you know, in 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 the in the spirit of cheerleading, I'm so proud of you. This is Thank this you. is such an amazing, amazing achievement. Um I've I've written before and I've, I've, I'm not published, but I, I do, I am aware of the process and how, how, you know, rewarding and yet arduous it can be at, at certain uh, 
points in 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 time and you know it it, it takes um you know the, the the idea of of a labor of love and birthing a book into existence uh, is 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 the metaphor that comes in comes to it to, feels like childbirth uh, it yeah. really elongated painful childbirth at uh, least you know at least with my oldest child it was only 40 hours and then it was done <laughs> uh this was a lot more than 40 hours i i, I yeah yeah, yeah. Right. 40 hours <laughs> plus 40 weeks you know whatever um yeah. I have to say though, I would love, I would love to read your memoir. I think there is a really magical book there, and I have some ideas on how I think you could execute that and what kind of support you would need to do it. And I would love for you to think about it. Well, you've you've mentioned that, and we we talked about we talked about the possibility of once once the book comes out and once. I, if if there is such a time once everything settles down settles down for you yeah, on that on, on your cool. end, you know I, I would I would you know I would love to have to to have some discussions with you about that and see see where it goes because it's a I've I've been <laughs> I have been doing something like writing my memoir ever since I and and I'm not kidding ever since I was about twelve and what happened when I was twelve was I. I saw in the movie theaters was when I saw the movie My Left Foot with with Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Which is the story of Christy Brown, who also had CP, a different kind of CP than I have. But he, you know, and he was a painter and and you know be, uh, wrote his the first eighteen years of his memoir in My Left Foot, and I literally rolled out of that rolled out of that movie theater and said if he can write his story so can i uh yeah. and so i started some version of it and then stopped and started and, and it i i have i have so many half half finished and half formed ideas that i would love to be able to collect into something that yeah i you know, love that you have all of those though because memory is a fickle fickle thing and absolutely. so if you've written some things down and you can tap back into that. Um, and it just goes to show how powerful storytelling is, mm -hmm. how much of an impact we can have when we vulnerably share our story with others. So I love and, it. And yes, you know, we'll and talk that, about it. And that's why I love so much the, the, the podcast, because you have on, on each episode, you have uh, basically a guest who has their own story of of bravery and and just how they're navigating through life and so many of those have have affected me and and touched me on such a deep level that and and every time I've I've every time I've had some sort of reaction I, I've reached out to you and you've you've you know that's how that's how our our dynamic developed um, you know and and it's just it's each and every episode is unique and it's the stories that, that, that get me every time. Yeah. Thank you. Well, this week's episode is just me. I'm telling my brave book story. So and I, I hope you like it. Do that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm really, I'm, that is, that's the story I would, I, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to listen to and I can't wait for it to, to drop into, into the podcast feed and into the YouTube feed and, I'll probably be among the first to listen to it. You after. always are. You get it when it comes out late on Wednesday night because Absolutely. technically it's not until Absolutely. Thursday. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, this, this has been. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. And I'm I'm thrilled that we were able to do this, folks. Uh, this has been Heather Vickery and her wonderful book, uh, Fuck Fearless, Making the Brave Leap. Um, everybody, really, everybody should have it on their shelves as soon as humanly possible. It will, it will, it will move you. It will affect your life. Um, and you know, those of you who are so moved, come and join us. Um, uh, you know, in, in the Brave Collective, we're we're great people. Um, we're supportive. I couldn't, as I say, I couldn't have done what I'm what I've done and what I'm doing without the support in that in that group. And um, it's if it if it resonates with you, by all means, come and join us. Absolutely. Thank you, Ita. Yeah, y'all just search Brave on Purpose in Facebook and you'll find us. So thank you. Great Have stuff. Have a great day. You Bye. too. Thanks so much, Heather. Yeah.